YouTube. And if you are new here, hi, my name is Noah. I am a spiritualist. And on my channel, we talk about death, true crimes, haunted people, places, and things, spiritual reparations, and how you can fuck around and find out. If you are not following me, I highly recommend that you do that now. If you are here and been here for a while, turn your notification bell on. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about Caribbean folklore creatures. And Calling them folklore kind of doesn't sit well in my spirit, but everybody doesn't believe what I believe. So we're just going to call them folklore creatures today. I know before y'all get in the comments, a lot of these creatures have been spoken about, seen in Africa. And that's because most of the Caribbean were stolen from there. So some of these stories, or not even stories, some of these creatures, if you are born and raised in Africa, or you are a child of an immigrant from Africa, you probably have heard this before. We have talked extensively about Lugawos and zombies on here, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that out of this video, and we're going to talk about some that I have never really touched on. We're going to throw some TikTok videos in there. I'm going to be just telling you my opinion as well. So let's get started. Number one on my hit list is what the Caribbean folk call jumpies. And depending on who you're talking to, jumpies can be described as mythical creatures who cause mayhem. Some people call them D-words. I don't like saying it in my house. Um, But... To my understanding, like I said, they are just creatures that cause havoc. It is also described as a sort of shapeshifter that can evolve into a number of things. This first video comes from a user named G. Karad, and she's explaining what Caribbean folk describe as a jumpy. If you grew up in a Caribbean, you grew up around a lot of folklore, myths, and legends. Today, I'm going to be talking about the negative perception of jumbies. Please understand that we've all heard different things. We've all researched different things. So if you have something different than what I'm saying, drop it in the comments so we can all learn from each other. All right. So I've heard that, that jumbies are going to be demons. They are entities that can shape shift so they can possess humans. They can possess animals. Jumbies are going to be very mischievous spirits. So they're going to be the ones that flicker your lights on and off, drop shit off your shelves, call your name in the middle of the night. Night. Jumbies are also known to cause more cataclysmic events, like they'll burn down your house or they'll, you know, sever the brake line in your car and send you down the road. Um, I've been told growing up that if you don't come in before the street lights come on, the jumbies just come out at night and they like to steal children. If you want to keep a jumbie out of your house, you'll sprinkle rice or salt in the front of your door so it'll block them from crossing the threshold. And I've been told that if you wear your clothes inside out, you can stop a jumbie from harassing you. So you turn your pants. I have seen a pattern in a lot of these videos and like the Lugaos and Jumpies to me seem very, very similar. And it's a lot of other mythical folklore creatures that have some of the same attributes as a Lugao and a Jumpy. So I thought that was very interesting. The next mythical creature that I want to cover is a Churao. And this one I had not heard of before. This is native to Trinidad and Tobago. And it is said to be a spirit of a woman who either passed away during childbirth or committed during childbirth. And it's very interesting how she can do a lot of things. The next TikTok was created by a user named The Carissa, and she explained this very, very well because this is not only in Trinidad, but it's also in Guyana. And I was hooked when I was watching her content because she is very knowledgeable. Y'all take a look. It's me, your local folklore auntie, and we are back with another Trini Paranormal, Trini Scary Story, Trini Folklore for you today. And I realized the video that I stitched, and I stitched it because many of you all were sending it to my DMs um, or tagging me and asking me, is this really a thing in Trinidad and Tobago? So I hear, worry not, I hear to give Olya more in-depth explanation as to what the creature that the woman was talking about really is. So before we start, I just want you all to know she is not wrong. Credits to the international spooky storyteller because she did pick out one of the more lesser known 
folklore of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so stop coming for the comments saying you never hear that in your life because now I'm going to dedicate all your honor, right? So we good, we good. So the pronunciation from what I know in my community, because I am from South um, and superstition still lives in rural areas or, um, you know, pockets of Trinidad and Tobago. It's known as a Chorail or a Churail. Um, and it is from the East Indian diaspora in Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana. So in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of East Indian communities or East Indian dominated communities, right? And the Churail or the Churail, um, it's something that is seeped in East Indian folklore, East Indian urban legend. And it was something that was brought from the East Indian indentured laborers to Trinidad and Tobago and to Guyana. So basically the Churail is a woman who would have died during childbirth or she would have died by suicide during childbirth. She is described as a woman with unkempt hair, very long, uh, dirty, uh, untidy hair. And in her hand, she holds her unborn child. It is believed that she would let out a very melancholic scream um, if her child is crying for milk. So she sounds basically like what people know to be a banshee. So it's this really loud, shrieking, scary sound that she makes when her child is crying or her unborn child is crying in her hand. So it is said that a churail or a churail preys on pregnant women because she is very envious um, of the life that this woman is living. It is said that she tends to um, attack the pregnant woman which would result in miscarriages. It is also believed that the churail um, during her pregnancy when she was a human she would have been neglected or abused by her husband and he would have also neglected her their children and so it is believed that she haunts him when she becomes a churail so the churail or the churail is also a superstition of folklore in guyana as you all know guyana also has a large population of east indian um, individuals and so the churail um would have had its origins from their east indian immigration uh during indentureship the churail is believed to be a vampire-like creature um, originating from something called a bhut, um, which is from Bengali culture. In Guyana, however, it is believed that the um, Churail is a woman who died during childbirth, but her child survives. And in her spirit form, she lets out a screech because she is sad from being separated from her child. So the Churail in Guyana is believed to resemble a human, except that her feet is turned backwards. So in Guyana folklore, or Guyanese folklore, it is believed that if you encounter a churail or a churail, um, you must cross a ravine or river because it is believed that spirits cannot cross water paths um, and also leave your shoes behind. It is said that the churail would spend most of the night trying to put the shoes back on. So yes, Trinidadians and all Caribbean folklore people, Trinidad and Tobago does have a folklore called the churail or the churail um the original poster of the video may have mispronounced it so i assume that that's why a lot of people um were kind of unsure unaware of what the video was about um but it is lesser known it is more so found in the east indian community uh, and it's something that is still believed today but not as much as long time so crazy she mentioned her feet being backwards in other um, areas where this story is told because there is another folklore about people's feet being backwards. And we'll get to that. Number three, Duins. And this one kind of made me sad. Duins are said to be children who passed away before they were baptized. They are faceless and their feet are backwards. Like I said a little bit ago, legend goes, if they hear a parent calling a child that is in this living world, they will try to mimic the parent's voice and call the child and lure them out into the woods. They wear big floppy hats and they have, like I said, no facial features, only a tiny mouth that they can speak out of. I researched online. They are particularly harmless. They're just pranksters. but. People are very weary about 
calling their kids names out in public in fear that they'll hear and take them out into the woods and apparently abandon them. I heard them abandon them. But there are people that believe that the Duen do do bad and they're not as benevolent as people make them out to be. So it really just depends on who you talk to, where they're from, what Faraki was told to them. The next TikTok, and I'm going to insert two, and remember, I'm always going to tag the creators in the description of this video. But the next TikTok comes from a user called Division, and he quickly goes over what he heard a doin to be, which is starkly different than what I heard a doin to be. Weird folklore that may actually be true. The creature behind me, it's called a doin. It's from the island of Trinidad and Tobago. Supposedly, it's created when a child dies prior to being baptized. The creature is three feet tall, has strange and evil teeth, and the feet are backwards. However, it looks like a child. It's said that you should not call your child's name outside because the creature can mimic you and will call your child into the woods and you will never see them again. If you're lucky, you may see them turned into one of these, but most likely they'll be turned into one of these, the bones. Now the strange part is, even though this is folklore, many children to this day go missing, and the only explanation could be they ran into a duet. Bro made them seem to be little miscreants that will eat your children, which I've never encountered one and hope to never. So I don't know. But the next TikTok kind of goes into depth a little bit more. And it comes from an account called Sweet TNT Magazine. Just listen to what they say. Folklore, 13 creepy tales in Trinidad and Tobago. Number two, Duan. Duan is the spirit of a child damned to roam the earth because the child died and was never baptized. It plays a wooden flute, wears a loincloth and straw hat, has no face and its feet are turned backward. It frequents watercourse areas surrounded by trees such as rivers, streams and springs where they feed on raw fish. It hides near schools and listens for the names of children to be called. It plays the flute to lure children into the forest, and if unsuccessful, it follows the child home. Children are advised to do something repulsive like eat food while on the toilet to upset the doing and turn it away. It's interesting how parents have developed this um, method of getting rid of a doing, but like I said, they're more tapped in and they understand more than I do because eating food on the toilet, I don't see how that could upset a spirit. But at the same time, I know nothing. What do y'all think? Number four, the chick charney. Now, this creature is said to have an owl-like appearance, but its legs are super long. Its head is able to turn almost 360 degrees like an owl, but it also can do a little bit of roaming, standing up like a human, just very much so weird stuff. And it's said that it's not necessarily an evil spirit unless you cross it and that you should always be polite if you ever cross paths with this creature. I'm going to insert a TikTok. It comes from a user um, with the handle The Cryptid Atlas. And she explains a little bit more about what a chick charney is. The chick charney, while not believed to be an evil spirit, is often described as having the face of an owl standing roughly three foot tall and covered with fine feathers that resemble fur, calling Andros Island its home. Bahamian natives have also commonly described the chick charney as having three fingers, three toes, and large piercing red eyes with the ability to turn its head nearly 360 degrees, typical of an owl. But some natives also believe that the chick charney has a prehensile tail, one that helps them grasp and hold on to the trees as they make their homes by tying the tops of two pine trees together. Many Andros Island residents believe that the chick charney, while owl-like in appearance, are actually more elfin or goblin in nature due to their mischievous, easily offendable, and sometimes aggressive behavior. Because of this, many Bahamian locals warn that if you come in close contact with these creatures, it's best to be polite. Oh, and they love bright colors. 
If you're visiting their island, it's best to bring them a brightly colored flower as a gift or at the very least dressed in your brightest colored attire. But double cross one and you're sure to fall on hard times. Laugh and mock them still and not only will they curse you with bad luck, but they're likely to forcibly twist your neck 360 degrees. That was interesting because I also came across a TikTok from a username Paranormally Correct and she grew up in the Appalachian Mountains and they also believed in the Chick Charney. Take a look. Growing up in Appalachia with uh, a lot of elderly folk who love to tell stories about magical creatures and crazy strange events, I heard a ton of stories as a kid. One of my favorite creature stories was about a chick charney. A chick charney. I know with my accent that probably sounds weird. Everybody knew about chick charneys. Everybody had a story or they knew somebody who had a story about running into a chick charney somewhere. And so as a kid that went on the list of creatures that I was continually on the lookout for. So here's what I grew up hearing about a chick charney. There was never any real definitive description of what a chick charney looked like, but I knew that they were small. And for some reason, I think I kind of imagined them as like little bitty demon-like creatures. But chick charneys, to me, as a child, they lived in trees. Uh, and they especially preferred low hanging branches. So like if you were out in the woods or if you were walking along a path somewhere and you walked under a tree with a chick charney in it, legend said that they would reach down and grab a hold of your hair and like pull pieces of your hair out. I had super long hair as a kid, like really long hair. So I was very protective of my hair. And um, so this really freaked me out. It, it got me on like a personal level. And every time I would go near a tree with a low hanging branch, I would check it to see if there are any chick charneys in it. And uh, I never did see one, unfortunately, but I was always on the lookout for it. Well, in the years after this, when the internet became kind of a thing, that was one of the first things that I looked up was like, I wonder if anybody else knows about chick charneys. When I finally was able to find something about it on the internet, it was pretty shocking what I found. Nowhere did it mention that this was an Appalachian thing, and I was really shocked by that. I was like, oh, that's, that's really cool. Turns out, chick charneys are folklore from the Bahamas. So it's just really cool that that story ended up in the mountains, uh, and people there know about chick charneys. So I was wondering if any of you all know about chick charneys, uh, and a little bit about them, because there's still not a whole lot if you Google it. Uh, they're bird-like creatures. They do live in trees. Nobody says anything online about them snatching pieces of your hair out, so I don't know if that's the Appalachian version, I guess. <laughs> but the original legend or folklore uh, from the Bahamas says that they are good luck if you run across one and you're nice to it and friendly with it and you give it something that it enjoys or appreciates, they will bring you good luck. And if you're mean to a chick charney, you will have terrible luck. So anyway, let me know if you guys have ever heard of a chick charney. Did you grow up with this story as well in the Appalachian Mountains or maybe in Eastern Kentucky? I would love to know. Leave me a comment and don't forget to follow for more spooky stuff. It is literally crazy how a folklore story from the Bahamas and Andros made it all the way up into some mountains with people who do not look like the people that originally made the story. Someone in the Appalachian Mountains must have come across this creature once upon a time. You know, us Black folks is everywhere. Number five, La Jablesse or La Diablis, depending on where you come from, who you heard it from. The story goes, and remember, it's region by region. The story goes that a woman made a pact with the devil in certain regions. Certain regions, y'all. But she made a pact with the devil and he granted her wish of eternal life. And she lures unsuspecting men into the woods. She looks human to the human eye, but there is one thing that sticks out and it is her leg. One of her legs is a cow leg. I'm going to let this next TikTok user explain because she explains a lot of different variations, and I think it was very, very educational. Her handle is Desor, and y'all just look and tell me if y'all ever heard of this, because this is my first time hearing about La Jablesse or La 
Diables. Can you talk about Caribbean superstitions? So yeah, these are the stories that we were told growing up in the Caribbean or wherever you grew up and you had either Caribbean parents, grandparents or whatever. A lot of us know those stories. However, they can vary from, depends on where you come from in the Caribbean, but this is how I know it. La Diables ou La Diables. Legend said that she was born a human, but her vanity leads her to make deals with the devil, exchanging her soul for eternal youth, thereby being transformed into a demon. It's also said that she was a person who thought that she was in love, but got her heart broken, and because of the grief, she ran away into the forest where she died. Rumors were that she became a demon because of her affliction, and wanted to kill men in the same manner that she died, because she blames the person who broke her heart. To other people, her figure, poise, and dress make her seem beautiful. The temptress and seductress who would entrap any man whose ill luck led him into her path. It is said that she appears or roams at nights during the full moon. She has eyes that looks like burning coals, and her face resembles that of a corpse but hides it under a beautiful hat and veal. She has one cloven foot or cow foot, which she tries to hide under her long skirt. Centuries ago, she would show up at dances, at the villages where she'd be seen as a threat by other women. She'd say a few words or charms trying to fool any man. And when one seems interested, she would ask him to take her home. He would then follow her completely under a spell, and she would take him deep into the woods then disappear, leaving him unable to find his way home, and he would either die in a ravine or river. I've been told that if you think you encountered a Laja Bless, remove all your clothes, turn them inside out, and put them on again. I've also been told that if you light a match, she would disappear because she's afraid of fires. I feel like I've heard that before. And I don't know if I've heard it and it was Laja Bless or um, I don't know. I feel like I heard that here in the States where it is a person that made a pact with the devil turned into a low vibrational d word and lured men unsuspecting men into the woods or whatever the case is but i say that to say a lot of the things that these creators are talking about that were passed down to them and is considered folklore we have adapted here in the states and the potaki just keeps getting recycled and changed number six the sukoyant the Sukoyant is said to be an older woman who sheds her skin at night and flies through the skies, giving a fiery appearance in the skies. There's been plenty of sightings and, you know, I'm going to tell you what I think afterwards because I've heard this story before, but it was from a slave. Just listen to what this creator says about the Sukoyant, because if you follow me on TikTok, I've covered the Sukoyant, but we were not calling her a Sukoyant. And this next creator, her handle is Mama Ticks on TikTok. And now I'm putting two and two together and it's giving four. So just, just watch. Okay, so we're back at it again with another video, but today we're going to talk about the Sukoyant, as you can see here. So the Sukoya is basically an old lady who is a shapeshifter. So at night she will wait until the sun go down obviously and then she will t take her skin off and turn into a ball of fire. When she take off her skin she's usually put in a mortar or a pestle or some people say this put in like a tree trunks or something like that. So once she turns into this ball of fire she usually goes around the village, neighborhood or whatever, go through your windows and stuff like that and will suck your blood. And when she suck your blood you will know because it's usually a mark like this. We just call it black and blues. I know y'all just call it some different kind of bruises, but you'll usually know if you have a black and blue that you can't explain. It'll be like, you get a sukuya bite. So typically, if you want to get rid of a sukuya or you're trying to not get a bite that night, you'll have to put some rice outside your window because she had to count every rice grain before she gets into your house. Or you gotta find where she put her skin and put some salt on it, which will make her unable to put the skin back on and then the sun come up and she dead. So you have any stories? Let me know. Okay. So for those who don't mess with TikTok, I have covered the Sukoyant, but we call them hags. And it was one particular story about a young man who went on a date with a woman and went over her house to not only court her, but court her parents. Because of course, you can't marry the family's daughter without getting the mom pa's permission. And they all shed their skin and went flying to 
hag. And they were almost like vampires where they would creep up on their enemies, suck their blood, um, and they would turn into like glob and be able to get into the, the smallest cracks and crevices. So I believe that that folklore came and evolved from the Sukhoyant. Number seven, the rolling calf. The rolling calf is said to be the spirit of a farmer or a butcher or someone um, that just did a lot of bad in their life. It is said that they come and, and they're reincarnated into a bull or a cow, but they are shapeshifters. They could be whatever they want. They just prefer the form of a calf. They mainly torment rural areas. This folklore is told a lot in Jamaica, but I'm sure that it came from somewhere else. Um, but the rolling calf is actually kind of scary because there's a lot of people who see calves, bulls, um, cows roaming at night by themselves. Because in the day it's said that they hide in caves and everything else, but they come out to fuck with people during the night. This next TikTok comes from a user called Raw Blaze, and he explains a little bit better as a native of the Caribbean as to what a rolling calf is. In Caribbean culture, a rolling calf is the spirit of a butcher, a farmer, or a man who lived a very wicked life. Now in his new life, he can change into anything and haunt the streets of rural Jamaica to scare anyone going out at night. It has flaming eyes and smoke-filled nostrils. It's angry and it has a chain around his neck, dangling, dangling, dangling. And it can come across as a three-legged goat or a three-legged bull. This story was told to children to prevent them from going out at night. But if you do come across one, heh, I'll tell you how to escape them. They are scared of the reflection of the moon. So if you have a mirror, just tilt the mirror at an angle so they can see the moon. If you have a whip, Work in your left hand and pretend like you're gonna whip them because they're afraid of whip. Take a knife and stick it in the ground at any intersection. Run across the street because they don't like to run across the street. Finally, drop random items for them to count. They're obsessed with counting and this is how you escape a rolling calf. Now that we have a better idea of what a rolling calf is, we have a bunch of videos online from people who live in the Caribbean and they're catching cows randomly in their backyards or on the streets somewhere that they don't belong just look at this and these accounts will be linked as well if you saw this what would you do Is this what a rolling calf looks like? I don't know. I'd be freaked out if I seen a cow just walking around. But I don't know. Especially in the dead of night. What do y'all think? Have anybody ever had an experience with a rolling calf? Comment down below. An honorable mention on this list is duppies. Duppies can be described as what all of these mythical creatures are. There are spirits shape shifters different things like that it's just a word to kind of describe them i guess correct me if i'm wrong i'm not about correction i'm not from the caribbean so from my understanding of what i research is that duppies are rolling calves sukoyans um ghosts regular spirits duins so that's my little honorable mention for that because i didn't want to give it a spot on the list because technically it can be explained that all of these are duppies. 10 disturbing facts about a duppy. In case you were wondering, a duppy is what Jamaicans call a ghost. One, they are able to possess things that are in the physical realm, such as people, dolls, furniture, etc. Two, a duppy can physically harm you. Three, most entities that you think are duppies are actually demons with an agenda. Four, some people use sacrificial rituals as portals to smuggle demons into the physical realm. 
Five, a lot of people who have died a tragic, sudden death are stuck in a loop, reliving old routines and revisiting old places over and over again. Follow Jamaican True Stories. Six, how your spirit is treated in the spiritual realm when you die in sin is different from when you die in Christ. Seven, in some regions where witchcraft is commonly used to load up guard rings and chains, etc., the presence of a duppy is not so common as they are desperately sought after, trapped and used for protection. Eight, if you see a duppy appear as a child, that's 100% a demon. There are no child duppies, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. 9. Old time people used to pack stones on graves in Jamaica to keep duppy from walking. 10. In Jamaica, there is a duppy bird called Old Man Quaco. Follow, like, and share for more. Number 8. Mama Delo. Mama Delo is said to be a beautiful woman from the waist up and a anaconda from the waist down. She lives in a forest and she protects all animals and she lures poachers or hunters by the river where she lives and basically does God's work. If you're catching my drift, I'm not trying to get banned off here, y'all. Y'all understand. But she's very sensitive about her shit and her shit is them animals in the forest and woods. Again, we're going to listen to Mama Tix who tells us um, from her region of the world, what Mama Delo is. Okay, so now it's actually part seven, but I want to talk about Mama Delo, which I know is actually very common with a lot of other cultures. So, so as her name suggests, Mama Delo means mother of the water. So kind of like how Papa was the protector of the forest, she's the protector of the river and all its creatures. So people usually say that they are married. So she's usually portrayed as a hideous creature that is half woman, half snake, so the bottom part of her body is like an anaconda and the top is usually naked and all of that. However, she commonly takes on the shape of a beautiful woman sitting at the river edge, combing her hair with this golden comb and all of that. But when you get her vex, she usually takes on this form which is the hideous, fully full body snake type version of her and that's when she's threatening you. So if you come here to hunt or fish or you damage the river, push some oil in it, throw some garbage in it or anything, Mama Delo will now turn into this and then after she will make you get married to her for this life and the next one. To get rid of her, take off your left shoe, turn it upside down and walk backwards. I love how in Caribbean culture we have a lot of water spirits and mythology around water. Um, this actually kind of reminds me of uh, Yemaya or Mamiwata different things like that because they very much are protectors as well number nine papa bois and this is said to be mama delo's husband while she protects the forest animals he protects the inhabitants of the forest so while she stays in the water he protects the earth in the forest which includes the people that live there, the animals, different things like that. I'm gonna just go ahead and insert a TikTok and it's a pot of key and it comes from an account called the city manager and it's about how ignorant um, Indians stumbled upon the great Papa Bois. Papa Bois, guardian of the forest. Deep in the heart of the dense forests of Trinidad and there exists a mystical folklore character known as Papa Bois. Revered as the protector of the forests and its inhabitants, this enigmatic figure, also nicknamed Daddy Buchan or Father Wood in the local Patois, holds an intriguing legend. Let us embark on a tale that unfolds in the vibrant Caribbean setting, where two Indian sailors unknowingly stumble upon the existence of Papa Bois during their shore leave. As the drunken chants of sailors echoed through the night, the bustling port came to life. Among them were two Indian men named Raj and Amar, serving on board the fetal Razak, a ship that had transported indentured workers from India to the beautiful island of Trinidad. Ignorant of the local legends surrounding the creature known as Papa Bois, the duo eagerly embarked on their long-awaited shore leave. The tropical air enveloped them as they ventured into the lush wilderness, excitedly discussing their plans for the day. Little did they know that their encounter with Papa Bois would soon become a haunting experience, etched indelibly in their memories. 
Unbeknownst to Raj and Amar, Papa Blah watched silently from the shadows, his keen eyes witnessing their every move. Wearing his signature leafy beard and covered in hair reminiscent of a donkey, he possessed an otherworldly charm. With hooves for feet and small horns adorning his forehead, this creature blended seamlessly into the natural realm, his presence an integral part of the forest. The dense tropical foliage enveloped the men, as the symphony of the jungle resonated around them. The sound of exotic birds chirping in the trees and unseen creatures rustling in the underbrush heightened their senses. Their excitement grew as they ventured deeper into the forest, unaware of the danger that lurked within. Suddenly, a misstep caused Raj to stumble, the echoing sound of his fall jarring against the peaceful backdrop. Startled, the duo froze, their eyes darting around in search of the source of the noise. But as their breath hitched, the dense vegetation parted to reveal a sight that sent shivers down their spines. Before them stood Papa Bois, his presence emanating an aura of quiet power. His eyes, filled with ancient wisdom, met theirs, and for a fleeting moment, time seemed to stand still. A mixture of fear and awe washed over the Indian sailors as they beheld the mythical guardian of the forest. In a futile attempt to defend themselves, Raj and Amar pulled out their hunting rifles, preparing for an encounter with a creature they knew nothing about. Before they could react, fear gripping their hearts, the deafening sound of gunfire reverberated through the silent woods, but the shots were met with a mystical resistance. The bullets ricocheted off an invisible force, as if thwarted by an unseen hand. Papa Bois, unmoved and unharmed, let out a deafening roar, shaking the very foundation of the forest. It was a warning to mankind, a reminder of their interconnectedness with the natural world. Terrified and humbled by the supernatural encounter, Raj and Amar hastily retreated, their minds filled with a newfound reverence for the mythical figure they had encountered. With each step away from the forest, they vowed to protect and preserve the delicate ecosystems that Papa Bois guarded so fiercely. Conclusion Through the tale of Raj and Amar, we witness the awe-inspiring power of Papa Bois, the enigmatic master of the woods. This story serves as a reminder of the importance of cherishing and respecting nature, for it is in its protection that we ensure the sustainability of our world. May we all learn from the encounter of these unsuspecting sailors and contribute towards preserving the forests and their magnificent flora and fauna, embraced under the watchful eye of Papa Bois. So Papa Bois and Mama Delo basically just make sure that you're doing good and being good in their shit to the earth. So I thought that was very interesting to share with you guys because while we look at it as scary and all that other stuff, he didn't hurt the characters. He just had to show them don't come in this, this forest fucking around and finding out. Number 10, the infamous mermaid or La Sarin. We have talked about mermaids quite frequently la sarine or mermaids are said to be inhabitants of the caribbean africa and it's not giving ariel at all even though some of the theme of the little mermaid is quite similar to the african and caribbean mermaids because they can come up on land and walk around like humans and try to lure your ass back to the ocean they are very different some say that they are malevolent creatures that will kidnap you and do as thy wilt with you. I've heard it go as far as they kidnap you. Sometimes they will bring you back um, and they'll bring you back and you have powers, red hair and freckles. Or if you give them what they ask for, if you're just so happen to be at the shoreline you see one and they ask you for something and you bring it back you are now their slave and they're still gonna kidnap you i've even heard of people being able to visit their loved one because the mermaids were feeling generous but your loved one appears to be sleeping and you can't really do or say anything it is said that they give their prisoners and victims gills to live underwater and there are mermen as well but the mer ladies like to take men as their toy if you will so there are children underneath there that are mermaids 
as well, half human, half mermaid. For this last segment, I am going to be adding in a slew of TikToks because everyone has their opinion on mermaids, depending on where you're from, what you practice, and some of them, most of them are from Caribbean or African descended people, and then others are from Christians. And I found this very interesting because my favorite topic on African and Caribbean folklore is mermaids. And if you've read the book of Enoch, you kind of understand why I, I'm going to insert some of the TikToks that I am. But I just want you guys to watch this, these TikToks, and I will be tagging all of the creators in the description box. Did you know many people in Jamaica not only believe in mermaids, but have said to have seen them? One spot in particular is Jamaica's Flat Bridge. Not only that, Flat Bridge was made long ago by enslaved people, and during its construction, many lost their lives, and are also said to haunt the area alongside the mermaids. On top of all of this, there have been a high number of fatal incidents with people and vehicles which add another layer of unusual accounts on the bridge. People say that when the river beneath Flat Bridge turns green, bad things are likely to happen. At times, it's believed the spirits or mermaids are responsible for incidents and people going missing. So sometimes, animal blood and rum is poured into the river to attempt to appease them. Some of the locals in the surrounding islands also claim to have first-hand accounts with mermaids. Accounts ranging from them being monsters, tricksters, you can strike deals with them, some of them being beautiful, benevolent, or also being behind disappearances. Some who have gone missing and later returned claim to have been abducted by mermaids. I'm entering this mermaid conversation because growing up I was taught that mermaids were real and I have a story to tell. Now, because I'm, I'm super hyped right now because I just got off the phone. I called a family member from Haiti who was known to have a lot of tales of mermaids. And so, y'all, it's wild. So, they're white, y'all, and then they're evil, and they kidnap people. That's the high level. Family member, and I remember hearing the story when I was a little kid about them going to the river in Haiti to get water for home to cook or something and literally that's what they just told me and they saw a part human part fish person sitting on a rock skin has almost no pigmentation combing their extremely long hair with a golden comb and their parent got mad at them because they didn't try to steal the comb from the mermaid i kid you not this is the story i have a lot of really interesting stories from haiti simply because i'm, I'm we're first generation Christian and so that pre-Christian period with voodoo and all that jazz it was spicy it was it was scary I, I like being a Christian I'm just chilling Jesus this family member saw the the mer person they startled each other the mer person jumped up and jumped into the water and splashed and this family member ran back to their home so what was the other part of the story okay also this person has a family member that was actually kidnapped by the the mer people so they often do they kidnap people um from from the island and make them indentures in their world and they were like their world is like just another version of what we might consider reality actually there's just demons i got a whole th then the story went further left i called this person up and they gave me more mer world tea but I don't want to end up on that end of TikTok, so I think I might just end it here. But yo, mermaids, they tend, or the ones that eyewitnesses have seen, tend to be white. But again, Disney's Little Mermaid is a fictitious world and a fictitious character, and it can be anything. So stop being racist. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my whimsical TED Talk. I see your monsters. I see your pain. I know we Caribbeans love our mermaid stories, so today's legend is about the legend of Sirena in Belize. Okay, you guys, here she is. I'm gonna read it to you guys from the book, kind of like it's a scary story, all right? Had to get my reading glasses, let's go. 
She is an enchantress of the seas, rivers, and lagoons in Belize. According to legend, she seduces fishermen to gain their love and is known to reveal the best fishing location. Even though her beauty is irresistible, one must avoid touching her skin because it secretes poisons that can cause a strange form of sea sickness that can lead to death. Some stories state that a fisherman's pure heart and respect will gain her love, which allows her to reveal the secret of the best place to fish and fortune. However, if the fisherman speaks of the secret and strange encounter, the seductress of the seas will take the fisherman's soul. Beware, for she fishes for the souls of the careless to poison, drown, and feast on their flesh. So there are a couple different versions of this um, legend, of course, you know, being passed down through the generations. Um, I encourage you to go online and just read up on the different versions. Of course, if you know one already, just go ahead and comment it below and let's talk about it. And again, go support the authors. Um, you can buy this book, Legends of Belize, on Amazon. This is something that's definitely not talked about enough, but we're going to talk about it today. Mermaids are absolutely real and absolutely demonic. The book of Genesis says that the sons of God came into the daughters of men and begat giants. This means that fallen angels were having sex with human women and those women produced what we know as giants or Goliath and different things like that. The book of Enoch, which is actually quoted in the Bible, says that the women that agreed to sleep with the fallen angels ended up becoming sirens. Sirens are what we know as mermaids and also seducing spirits. These spirits dwell in the water and even have a kingdom, which is where we get the concept of Atlantis. It gets super deep. I'm going to have to do a few more videos on this. Regardless, Jesus is the answer in order to be delivered from them. There are many people in countries where stories of mermaids are extremely well known, like Haiti, for example. Believe that mermaids were once much more curious and would commonly make themselves known by freely swimming with the dolphins and even interacting with some fishermen. But it is said that humans may have become fearful of these creatures and started to attack them, leaving them with no choice but to hide. Some people believe that the dolphins actually protect mermaids from us harming them and that when you see a dolphin, it's often likely that there's a mermaid nearby. Intelligence and the playfulness of dolphins has forever fascinated and captivated the hearts of humans. And some of the interactions between man and dolphin are just mind-blowing. Like the relationship with the fishermen of Laguna, Brazil, worked together with dolphins for decades using the most Today, unique fishing method. Line up to wait for the dolphins. They stand in water so murky that only the dolphins, with their echolocation, know if fish are there. The men wait for a signal as the dolphins herd fish to them. Only when the dolphin signals and rolls away in safety do they throw their nets. The dolphins wait for the fish who try to escape the nets, only to be caught easily in their jaws. In India, dolphins have been recognized to have such a high intelligence that they have actually been declared as legally non-human persons whose rights and liberty must be respected. Considered to be some of the most intelligent animals, so if anybody knows anything about mermaids, it's them. Listen, mermaids are not just a thing for African descended people. I have heard mermaid stories from all around the world making me think not only is this a thing in places that are African or Caribbean, but mermaids have always been around in different parts of the world because I've read about Ireland, I've read about Europe, it's crazy. Everybody is not lying. I'm telling you, when these movie producers and TV show producers and EPs get their ideas, it comes from somewhere. That's all I'm saying. That is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have a spooky story, a true crime story, a fuck around and find out, grab your popcorn story. I will be linking my email in the description and pinning it so you can share it with me. Until next time, y'all do good, be good, and stay safe.